You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You. We're going to be talking about LiDAR today. It's been a hot topic recently. And uh, it should be a, should be a fun one. So, thanks again for joining us. As always, my name is Paul, and my name is Rob. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with us. Appreciate it every single time. We do. We got an interesting question today regarding an Inspire Two and a lidar setup. And while there may be options out there for that particular use case, uh, I am not convinced that that is going to be a good bird for LiDAR, but we'll talk about that uh, right after this question. So thanks again for joining us. If you are a Drone U member, thank you very much for the support. You can join us at an upcoming mapping class. We have changed and expanded the content, so we welcome you. We've got another one coming up uh, here in September, October, and many months to come. We also are going to be doing another experience training here. I think it's my first mention of it. We're going to be doing it in the spring. Last time we focused on uh, resort marketing. I really feel like we could do another experience training on resort marketing and focus entirely on Cinewhoop and fly through tours because you could take the entire week doing that, gain the practice, and then be able to walk out and, and do those shots at the end of the week. So, But this experience training is going to be focused on construction. So we're going to be doing uh, mapping. We're going to be focusing on videography, photography, and advanced aerial videography, i.e. the movements. Uh, I think that this is a very pertinent deliverable set because this doesn't work just for construction. You do any marketing job and you're going to have to build these three deliverables anyway. So I think this is going to be very relevant. Uh, we already do have a company and multiple people who have said, when you make the page and book it all, tell me and, and I'll book it. And if all those people book it, we might already have sold the thing out. So we will see. But that said, uh, check out all of our trainings. Go to thedroneu.com and scroll down to events. If you are ready to build your confidence and transform into a very different pilot, think of a stoic pilot. That's, uh, but that's going to do it. Thedroneu.com. Let's hear that question. Hey guys, I just wanted to first say how much I appreciate your knowledge and what you guys do for the community. Uh, the second thing I wanted to ask was, because I am on a tight budget and I want to get into LiDAR data mapping, I was curious if the Inspire 2 is RTK possible. Is there a way to install an RTK on it and use that for a LiDAR? Any answers would be appreciated. Thank you so much. Steve, thank you very much. Appreciate you sending in a question. Um, I think one of the the responses I always have for questions like this is anything's possible. <laughs> it's like when it comes to maybe a, a remodel <laughs> on my house, right? Or doing like my wife will tell her dad who knows construction really well and helps us with a lot of projects. Um, can we do this? And he's like, how much money you got? Yeah. <laughs> like we can do anything as long as you want to put in the time and the money. The question is, is it efficient? Is right. it scalable? Yeah. And is it uh, profitable? Right. And are you going to spend $10,000 to do something to your house that you're going to get 10 bucks back for? Mm, yikes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, Chances so. are I have already done that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, very interesting question. Um, you Makes know, perfect sense. I mean, you got a nice bird. Can I just make it do this too? Well, and I would like to ask the caller a follow-up question because is this question regarding adding some sort of RTK unit to an Inspire 2, is this because you want to use the Inspire 2 to add the lifelike photogrammetric element to your LiDAR? Or are you trying to have the RTK in use with a LiDAR system for the Inspire 2. Hmm. I will also say, no matter which answer it is of, oh, I well, I want to use the X7 for photogrammetry and just get really killer data and have a geo-reference. Okay. Um, or is it, you know, hey, I'm going to put a LiDAR system on my Inspire 2 and want the RTK to work for it. I think in both instances, 
I don't think it's an efficient, personally, I would not go that way because you're adding so much weight to that bird that you're really reducing the flight time on it. And I'm not sure the value that you get out of that level of geo-referencing would be worth it unless you are modeling or mapping extremely large things. Um, and in that sense, I would go PPK, not RTK. So with all of that to be said, are there RTK systems? I believe that POW system can be used with the I2. I just don't know if I would use it. I would probably use something else. So you, you heard him say that he's got budgetary constraints. Mm. So as you know, most of us do, we're trying to solve things efficiently, financially and otherwise. What might you do if this was your situation? You had an Inspire 2, you needed this kind of accuracy. What what would you do to be the most economical and efficient you could? Let me put on my PJ hat. Well, Rob, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does. Yeah, that's, uh, it depends is, is a great response. <laughs> and, and PJ, you do not sound like that, okay? <laughs> so um, I say it depends because it depends on the deliverable. I was recently talking about this particular point with a props client. Um, they said they're, they're really trying to discern LIDAR versus photogrammetry. And they tested this uh, the L1 system. And then they tested another system that was on like an M600. And it had a fixed Sony camera on it. And I said, well, the biggest issue with LIDAR, and I feel like this is where a lot of LIDAR people are lying about their true capability, is they say, oh, they'll make lifelike LIDAR. Hmm. Can they technically? Yes. Is it very good? Absolutely not. Because typically they're flying a single grid on their LiDAR system and taking photos with a fixed mount camera that cannot tilt or articulate or capture oblique imagery. Meaning that the quality of their 3D model is, well, as Kona would put it, uh, dog shit. So, um, <laughs> so um, you can get much better 3D models by doing oblique images, orbital flight patterns, double grids, facade shots, free flight shots, etc. And so if you are in the LiDAR business, just know this is why photogrammetry is gaining so much more traction over LiDAR. One, the cost is much lower. Two, the output product is much more lifelike and visually appealing. Even though the vertical accuracy may be less, it's still good enough to make those decisions. And that's the thing is that LiDAR is so expensive. And typically the way that these LiDAR systems are set up, you're not physically capable of getting the right data to make 3D models that are comparable to what your competition is doing. And so I think this is kind of the heart of the question here is, hey, I want to use my Inspire 2 with RTK to augment my LiDAR data to get better LiDAR data than anyone else. I would say if you are able to use GCPs and, uh, you know, our landing pads, 240 bucks or 250 bucks for a set. And if you were to get the Trimble DA2, you know, and you're getting a two centimeter Z axis uh, accuracy in the right conditions. Um, you're, you're still going to get a better 3d model than trying to affix an RCK unit to your Inspire 2, which is going to significantly reduce the flight time that's already low. And I just don't think it's an efficient way to go about the business. Now, I hope this guy calls in again and provides more context. Like, what are the deliverables? What has he tried to achieve? How is he trying to augment this stuff with LiDAR, et cetera? Because there is absolutely, and, and you know, back to the, the show that we just shot, right? This is a perfect opportunity to capture a market segment. You've got people charging eight, $9,000 a day flying LiDAR and getting data that may look great on a colorized elevation point point cloud, you know, where you get your reds, your yellows, your greens, and it does look somewhat lifelike. But when you actually, you know, zoom in and look at details, you look at walls, facades, detail underneath, like uh, our front patio, perfect example, you wouldn't see that at all. Right. So um, honestly, there's a huge opportunity here for really good 3D modelers to go to people looking to do LiDAR stuff to say, look, we can make better 3D models and we can get them accurate too. I mean, depending on the deliverable, they might have to work with another 
um, industry professional, you know, going back to having to work with a surveyor, et cetera. That said, there is an opportunity here. And I would also say most people who want those lifelike 3D models also do not need them geo-referenced. Right. Well, part of the thing with LIDAR is like real dense ve vegetation and so forth, right? It's better for that. Mm -hmm. So if you're on the East Coast or the, the Midwest, Upper Midwest, et cetera, um, it's helpful in that sense. But in term, but then you're not getting the lifelike three models in that case either. Correct. So it just depends on what you want. It really, that's why I said it depends. You know, that's why I started with that. Yeah. Well, I, Steve, follow-up question please. I think is in order. Please. Let us know more information and uh, we'll hop back on it. I love these deep nuanced questions though, because people are starting to see where there are very real opportunities because the industry is evolving from exciting, fun, and hey, you can use this to make better decisions to okay, we're starting to really understand the technology and this decision is better, but we can also get much better for cheaper and more efficient. Yeah. And those are the businesses that are going to do well. So I have to give this guy, Matt, his Steve is his name, mm -hmm. mad credit. Like, love where your head's at, dude. And you're going to do very well. So please send in a follow-up. And uh, But that's all I got, Rob. Awesome. Well, thanks for the question, Steve. Appreciate it. If you have a question... <laughs> Go to askdroneu.com. We would love to hear from you as well. Um, yeah, it's 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 a show for you. That starts with your questions. Yeah, I also, I think I want to bring on a particular guest to talk about the L1 too and educate us on the real applicability of the L1. So I'm going to reach out to someone today that I've been wanting to have an invite on the show. I think we can all collectively say please. Yeah, well, that's going to do it. <laughs> Thanks again. We'll see you next time.